Okay, now we have four terms here. And the first thing I always look at is this. Is there something common to all of them? There's not. So I call this method I call divide and conquer. That's what I call it. I'm going to look at the left half. And so because of that, I'm even going to wipe out that so we can't see in a second. X cubed minus 2X squared. What's common to both of these? The only thing common is an X squared. So if I factor an X squared out of this, I'll leave with an X minus 2. Now here's what's really nice. So I have an X minus 2 here. I have to have an X minus 2 on the other side. So what I'm going to do is whatever's in parentheses here, I have to have there. So I always write it like this here. And then I look up here and go, well, can I multiply by X to get 3X? Well, it would be a plus 3. And guess what? Plus 3 times X and plus 3 times negative 2 makes 3X minus 6. And then what I do is this. I treat this like a big distributed property. X minus 2 is common to both. So I can take the X minus 2 out. And what's left? X squared plus 3. I call it dividing concrete. I only look at the one side. So let's look at this and we'll try it again. Is there anything common to all of these? No. So let's look at just the left side. What goes into 3X cubed and minus 6X squared? Well, 3 will go into 3 and 6. And the X squared will go into both of them. So I make a parenthesis. And in the parentheses, I have this. If I take a 3x squared out of a 3x cubed, all that's left is an x. And negative 6x squared divided by 3x squared is a minus 2. And because I have x minus 2 here, I have to have x minus 2 over here on the right. Same exact thing, which I will now then what? What would I take times x to get negative 4x? It'd be a negative 4. And negative 4 times x is negative 4x. And negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. So then I'm going to rewrite this. Now, the x minus 2 is going to be one parenthesis. The other parenthesis will be what's left, the 3x squared minus 4, because technically it's like a huge distributed property. Oh, let's try this one. Uh, before I do anything, look, what goes into 6, 2, 12, and 4? Actually, I take a 2x squared out here. I took a 2x squared out, so I have 3x plus 1. All right. And now I have 3x to have 3x plus 1 here, which I would take then times a minus 4. So then here's what I have. But also know this here. This 2x squared minus 4. I divide each of those by 2. I can factor a 2 out. Now I probably should have taken the 2 out first. It would have made the number smaller a little easier, but I could get there this way. It didn't really matter the order. But it would probably be better to take the 2 out first. And that's what I'm going to show you here. Then I would do the same thing by dividing conquer, looking at it. It would just still be an x squared times a 3x plus 1, and 3x, what would it take times 3x to get a negative 6x? The answers were the same. We had the divide and conquer. I would have probably done this way here first. And the, these big brackets were just here. Show that I still got to take 2 times the whole thing. So looking at this one here, is there something that was in 32, 16, 18, and 9? No. So let's look at the first half. What goes into both of those? It would be a 16x squared, which leaves me an x 2x plus 1, because 16x squared times 2x would be 32x cubed, and 16x squared times 1 would be 16x squared. Because I have 2x plus 1 here, i got to have 2x plus 1 here. Well, what would I multiply by 2x to get a negative 18x? A negative 9. And notice negative 9 times 2x and negative 9 times 1 makes that up there. So once again, I'm going to do this here. So I have this 2x plus 1. The, 16, the 16x squared here should be gone. It's kind of a typo. It should be that right there. So now then... This here will factor, it's a ratio, so I end up with this, but the 16x squared should be gone. 16x squared is not part of this answer. It's just a typo on my part. But that's how you would factor that. Not the 16x squared, but these would be the answers right here.